What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're taking a look at a game called Fahagen, Fathagen, Blugen. I don't know how to say it. I'm bad at reading. Uh, I do like Lovecraft, but this is a game where you are a cultist working your way through a short story to try to awaken a greater old one. Very similar to like Cultist Simulator, just minus the cards and minus the uh, having to work every single day for a living. Minus that part. But let's go ahead and dive straight on in and see what's going on. So we've got the Dreaming Eye, a small cult dedicated to waking the Great Dreamer. When the dark moon arises, the temple of the great dreamer will rise once more from the ocean floor and their time will be at hand. Better at hand than at foot. Let's do this one. Let's go for it. I gotta pick my cultist. I'm gonna go with this bald, threatening looking guy over here. He's also got that gold embroidery right there, which makes me think he's the dopest. Like, there is such a right thing as a right choice when it comes to these characters, and that's definitely the guy right there. So let's do it. Let's dive straight on in. It's time for us to go. Oh, yeah, a spinny masky thing. Uh, welcome to Fahagen. You have six rounds to prepare for the ritual. To pass the ritual, you need to successfully complete a roll. Click the card icon to see all the possible rolls. You'll be able to select these rolls at the end of the game. Each roll has a major and a minor stat requirement. You need to pass both in order to complete the roll. Look at the card picture and text to gain clues. The ritual feedback at the end of the game will give you more clues. Elder signs are used to... I'm going to read these. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay. So I gave it a read-through. It's actually, it seems a little complicated, but my guess is that it's more intuitive once we get into the game. So here we are. We're at a location. We have stats. We have influence. Your rank in the cult. How you influence people through your strong personality, through blackmail or force. We have body. How strong and healthy you are. Okay. Oh, uh, we've got performance. Your artistic ability and how stealthy and sneaky you are. Your ability to influence people through lying. Uh, we've got magic, your ability to cast magical spells or use artifacts. Ooh, knowledge, your magical scientific knowledge, your fuel units as it were, your ability to read and understand magical tomes. And then we've got sanity, how sound your mind is, how easily you can resist going crazy. When negative, you will change to insanity, okay? And then on this side, we've got our riches, how rich you are, required to unlock certain event options. Okay, so as I understand it from the tutorial, the pips on the left... If we left click it, we'll do an activity there that will give us two body and one of the knowledge. If we right click on this, we'll get one body, we'll get one magic, and we'll get one of something. Over here we've got a magic shop which will give us riches and a little bit of magic over there. And we've also got the Church of Starry Wisdom which will give us a little bit of influence. It'll give us some, what is that, lying? Is that what that was? Performance, yeah. We've got performance and riches if we go with the second event over here. Let's go to the church. So we can organize a bake sale or we can indoctrinate people. Let's indoctrinate people. Putting on your best fake smile, you convince the hapless to join your cause. One performance and two influence. It was your first Albo Karma ritual and you excitedly took place in the circle as the high priestess started her fervent and trance-like incantation. Halfway through the ritual, you suddenly felt an all-too-familiar spasm in your gut and realized that your spicy lunch was about to make a comeback. There was absolutely no way you could excuse yourself and the ritual was far from over. If you let it rip, you'll have to be ready to shift the blame, but if you keep it in, you'll definitely learn the meaning of pain. What will you do? Well, fart freely, my friend. Fart freely. Like Benjamin Franklin said, you suspiciously gaze at the hooded and masked figures around you. Is anyone really going to know that it was you who farted? As you complete the ritual back and forth swaying, you decide to let it out slowly. Now, the acoustics of the room were specifically designed to intensify the sound of incantations, and unfortunately that meant any other sounds as well. Your air biscuit turned into a real squeaker instead of a silent poof, and it sounded like a balloon being deflated very slowly and loudly. Luckily, because of the acoustics, nobody could pinpoint exactly where the fart came from, and as you moved away from the smell, you disgustedly pointed to a nearby cultist. <laughs> Good save. Two performance. Oh god. The ritual now being rudely interrupted by your stinky secret. It was postponed to the following week. Alright, well apparently I ripped a fart in church and, you know, I've been there, man. I used to go to church like four times a week and sometimes you got a fart in church and you just kind of got to look around suspiciously while everybody else is like, Oh, what's that smell? You got to do what you got to do, man. It's a rough life out there, but hey, when it gets gangsta, bump, 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 when it gets gangsta, yeah. Uh, we can go to Miskatonic, or we can go to the Witch's Hut, or we can go, let's see here, to Arkham Sanitarium, where we can get, I guess, some sanity, and we can get ourselves a little bit of knowledge as well. Is there any place I can go to get, like, mad knowledge? Let's go to Miskatonic and get some knowledge. Sounds good to me. Uh, Miskatonic University. We can delve through the tomes, or we can go on an expedition. 
Let's delve through the tomes first. You spend your time locked in the Orn Library, perusing dark treatises, occult manuscripts, and sanity-shattering tomes. You gain two knowledge, but lose a sanity. Oh no. You thank the dark gods for this little tidbit. A nobody assistant professor named Wilmarth from the English Literature Department had to come ask your advice about some letters he had received. He showed you the letters from a Vermont farmer named Akeley and his claims about alien creatures living near the farm. You tried to act cool as you realized the farmer had stumbled upon your Mego mining operation, and you started to break out in a cold sweat as you scanned over a few of the lines. I have certain evidence that monstrous things do indeed live in the woods, and the things come from another planet. Up to that point, you could have persuaded Wilmarth that Akeley was a kook, but it was the next sentence that stopped your heart cold. I think they mean to get rid of me because of what I've discovered. There's a great black stone with unknown hieroglyphics half worn away which I have found in the woods on a round hill. The Gerchiff alone, that farmer has stolen the Gerchiff stone and he's intending to send it to Wilmarth by train today. You must get it back. Um, let's send Amigo to get the package. I mean, I'm good at lying. Let's try and tell him it's a hoax. Yeah, the black stones aren't even real. You were quite sure that there was a very good lie, but from Wilmar's skeptical expression, you assume you were the only one. Quickly losing control of the situation, you try to remember anything from your theatrical training that might help. Suddenly, you had an idea. Oh my, I seem to have come down with the vapors. You flap your hand in front of your face and faint. Unfortunately, on your way down, you knock your head on the table and pass out cold. You lost body. When you came to, you couldn't remember how you came on the floor. Must have slipped, you thought, as you walked back to your desk. Lose a knowledge. Aw, oh, man. We didn't get nothing out of that, but we did get insanity, so that's good, I suppose. I, I think we're getting a little crazier right now. We might be getting a little crazier. What does this do? Oh. So, after a thousand years of knowledge conjunction of the Ablo Cleth, visible only to the Mad Astronomer, once more will darken the sky. We've also got the blood of Capadajo. The sorcerer will by his own hand slay Capadajo and pour his steaming black blood into the pit of despair. I don't think I have any of those right now. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we'll get some riches over here? Let's go get paid. We will man the shop. You operate the shop front buying powerful artifacts and selling some love potions and minor trinkets. One magic and two riches. Yay! It had been a rough couple of nights and the lack of sleep has started to take its toll on you. As you were stacking a shelf of potions, you nodded off for a second. Slowly, the ladder you were standing on tipped backwards. Startled, you woke up and body slammed the tilting ladder against the shelf, sending potions flying in all directions. A whole cacophony of shatters and a couple of tiny explosions later, the whole floor was covered in multicolored liquid. How are you going to get down? Um, wade through the muck? How bad could it be, you thought, and you jumped down into the multicolored goo. It turns out, pretty bad. Had you been more physically inclined, you might have resisted the effects of the weird concoctions, but as it stood, you were instantly transformed into a tadpole. And not the cute kind, either. You had about six eyes, crooked teeth, and Tourette's. You swam in the goo for what felt like ages, when at last a couple of cultists fish you out. After calling them all turd-munching wig punchers, they finally managed to turn you back. Not an experience you want to repeat. Lost to sanity, but I gained some knowledge. Okay. I think I might be getting a little crazier. I think the craziness might be mounting, y'all. I think it might be getting worse. Um, I don't want to get any more insanity, so maybe I'll try to sane on up. Yeah, let's check in. You've seen too much and you feel your fragile hold on reality slipping. Some time spent in the asylum has given you more insight into the human mind and helped you achieve some inner peace. There we go, we got two sanity back. And now we got some knowledge as well. A reporter from the Arkham Chronicle has been hanging around the sanitarium. Apparently he's following leads on people going missing and suspicious activities in the asylum. With a little money, you could easily make this problem go away. Alternatively, you could try to have him committed, but that would require a lot of paperwork. Uh, let's arrange for him to have a little accident. These kinds of accidents require someone with a particular set of skills. Skills which weren't cheap, but fortunately he'd been saving up for just an occasion. The next morning, the police find the body of the reporter. According to the reports, he had accidentally backed into a knife 11 times, tripped and fell off a cliff and drowned in the forge below. Just like the FSB wanted it to happen. Apparently he had also taken the time to write you a note in which he bequeathed you his gym membership and tickets to complimentary dance classes. One body and one performance. Aw, yeah. We lost some riches, but hey, it's working out right now. I would think... Hmm. I can be a traitor. I can be vigilant. Heed these warnings. Be prepared for the intruder and the craven whatever. The Maltese Cockerel. Finally let the crow, the gem-studded Maltese Cockerel, let its crow sound the doom of the world. I would assume that that's maybe for making money. I don't really know. Like, these don't give you a whole lot of clues as to what you're going to need. Hmm. 
I don't know. Maybe we'll go... Let's go to the Starry Wisdom and keep working on our performance and our influence. How about that? Let's indoctrinate. You still can't believe your luck. The exquisite and talented actress Amy Brooks became a member of the church. Almost dying from pneumonia a few months ago, Ms. Brooks has developed an acute desire to broaden her spiritual horizons. She wants to contribute to the community in a significant way and felt that the Church of Starry Wisdom would be the perfect place to do this. Naturally, you are happy to oblige. Uh, let's do a charity gala. What better way to make money than to throw a party for the rich? You convince Amy to host the Starry Wisdom Charity Gala for orphans who can't read good. Thanks to your superior networking skills and Amy's infatuating talents, the gala is a great success. The church duplicitously pockets a small fortune that night, and you receive a sizable bonus for initiative. Nice. Euphoric at all the good that you have done, Amy kisses you in appreciation. She's a terrible kisser, but eh, you pretend to like it. Two more performance right there. Nice. Nice. I think this is the final cycle. I think you only get six turns. But our performance game is on point right now. Performance is doing pretty well. Let's go over and hobnob. You attend a great function of the rich and influential. Now is the time to eat, drink, relax, and worm yourself into the rich middle class. One sanity, one performance, and one influence. While sitting in your office, you suddenly hear a raucous commotion coming from downstairs. As you rush to see what's going on, you are suddenly assailed by smoke rising from the first floor. From the shouted slogans, you immediately realize that Town Hall has been attacked by the National Anti-Prohibition League. Another Molotov cocktail flies through the window, instantly setting the desk on fire. Uh, let's go stop the flames? How to go about this? Being the intellectual type, evident by your grandiose use of superfluous words to make you sound more photosynthesis, you decide to make a contraption that will use the water in the toilets to cover the building. It takes you a couple minutes to draw up the plans, but in the end you realize you don't know what you're doing. Eureka! You still could have the same effect, but if you stick a lot of dynamite into the toilet, five minutes and twelve sticks of dynamite later, you press the plunger. The whole building goes up in a smoke of rubble. At least the fire's out, you think. And a couple of our enemies are dead, you say, trying to get to the brighter side. Yay! It is time. Um... I don't know. That one seems to be insanity. This one seems the hateful screech of Ur, so I assume that that's performance. Let's go after that one. Perform the hateful screech of Ur. The blessed shout of screams will wake the ancient dreamer. Do it. The Reckoning. You have been studying the technique for the hateful screech of Ur and come to the following conclusion. The song was bonkers. Satisfied by your rational explanation that so no self-respecting ancient one could condone such ludicrous behavior, instead perform a nice uplifting aria. Surely it could be better than this lunacy. A minor fail. Damn it, I have been defeated. The ritual quiets down and all eyes turn to the immense carved door nestled into the side of the temple. The squid dragon bass relief glistening wet in the moonlight. After 15 minutes of waiting, a dreaded realization starts to gnaw at your mind. After an hour, only the ones too stubborn to admit defeat are still left. As the moon set behind the waves, only the ones who could not deal with the horror of what they had done for seemingly no gain were still on the island as it again started to sink beneath the waves. Actually, failing the ritual was the best thing that could have happened to you. You realized that you didn't actually believe in all this hocus pocus, and everything that you've seen was probably because of a gas leak. In the years to follow, you became a prominent figure in opera circles. You had a couple of babies, and when they were all grown up, you all turned the world as the three tenors and the lovely soprano. Unfortunately, having fully embraced the opera physique, you died overweight due to heart complications in your early 50s. That's okay. I mean, that sounds like a good life. Uh, we got three of the little thingies. I don't know what we use those for. Do you want to install your first mod? I don't know. I just wanted to play again. Let's play this guy this time. Maybe that'll work out for us. We'll give it a go. Psycho one. Um, let's do something different this time around. Let's go down. Let's go dancing, actually. Madam Fufus. So at Madam Fufus, we can either gamble or we can play in the band. Let's play in the band for a little bit. You decided to take a break from it all. You spend the evenings regaling patrons with your soulful, slightly disturbing tunes. Yay, we got some sanity and we got some performance right there. The cult had sent you with money to bribe an official. On the way, you had a thought. As a cultist, it's kind of expected of you to be a backstabbing son of a gun. Therefore, the logical course of action would be to keep the money for yourself. It would be easy to pull off either way, but if you keep the money, you'll have to make it look convincing. Alternatively, carrying out the drop-off might lead to some more blackmail opportunities. Let's go through with the payment. Deciding not to cross people who can literally summon monsters, you head for the meeting site. You drop off goes without a hitch and you make a mental note of the official's face. Could be useful for later. Two influence gained. Alright. Sounds good to me. We got a bunch of stats out of that one. So we got a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Yup, yup. Um, 
let's go... Maybe I needed to be a little bit more insane next time when I do the influence dance. I'm thinking that was the problem, because it said it was a minor fail. So that makes me think that I had the performance, but I did not have the insanity to make it happen. So maybe insanity would help. There's no way to really tell, right? There's no way to- there's no way to know. Let's cast some spells. You summon eldritch horrors and open portals to other planes. The power grows, but you can feel your sanity slipping. That's okay. Albertus Sharp was a loon. We had already been a part of the cult when you were still in diapers, and the sad truth was, the longer you stayed, the less of your mind remained. Occupational hazard. That and becoming the next sacrifice. Albertus, in his madness, had discovered a gift, though. The ability to make machines, which nobody wanted. His latest invention, was he called the money-sucking treasure box, and convinced you that it would be great for the store. As a couple of acolytes wheeled it in, you gave it the once-over. It was very unremarkable, which reminded you a bit of a dunking booth once you saw it at the state fair. Top part of the box was encased in glass, and dangling from the center was a mechanical claw. According to Albertus, you could lock a couple of artifacts in there, and customers would, for a dime, try to fish one out. Apparently, it was difficult to make the store a lot of money. Let's test it out on customers. The box was a hit. People would line up for blocks to get a chance at the new machine. They would drop in dime after dime just for the small chance of acquiring an artifact. Two riches gained. Albertus was truly a mad genius. All right. Sounds good to me. We got some magic right there. Let's get a little bit more magic and a little bit more insanity. You summon Eldritch Horrors once again. Your power grows, but you feel that sanity going. Today you traded a traveling witch for a book of Ugna. Now that the shop is quiet, you page through the book wondering what spell to try out. The spell that reads the foul, cruel, bad-tempered rodent, or the spell that reads do not under any circumstances cast this spell. Well, obviously we have to. It's like a big red button. You have to push it. You whisper the dreaded name written into the book. There is a rush of the wind, but to your surprise, nothing else. You sit in the darkness for a bit, disappointed at failure. As you close up the shop, you pick up your hat from the hat rack and are startled by a loud, You idiot! You stare in amazement at the talking hat rack and the avatar of the skinless one trapped inside. You couldn't even transfer me into a proper vessel? It seems kind of pissed. All of a sudden, the hat rack leaps at you at a giant maw appearing out of nowhere, snapping. You rush out of the shop and sprint off, the hat rack chasing you till the spell dissipates. You gain body! Yay, we did cardio. Huzzah, and we got a little bit crazier, too. I'm gonna focus on doing magic. That's what I'm trying to do. Let's get some magic done here. You summon Eldritch Horrors again. Your power grows, but sanity slips. Early one afternoon, a lady dressed in black enters the shop. She carries a box filled with junk, and you can see she's clearly in mourning. She explains that her husband passed away under bizarre circumstances and left her with a lot of debt. She's been selling off some of his possessions. The pawn shop didn't really want them, but they told you you might be interested. You have a look at the box. There's a lot of occult paraphernalia, but it was the kind of junk teenagers use to impress girls. One item does get your attention, though, a shriveled monkey paw. With the power to grant wishes, this is a pretty good talisman, albeit a tiny bit fickle. Let's buy the monkey paw. She leaves you, you close the shop early and draw the curtains. Your heart races as you hold firmly to the paw, wishing for wealth, power, and sex appeal. Five riches, two magic, and two influence. Man, you're in awe at the power of the talisman, but before you could wish for more, tragedy strikes. The paw twists your wishes into nightmares. You gained wealth, but a loan shark appeared on your doorstep and broke your legs for not having his money on you. No! You could cast powerful spells, but while trying to open a portal to the nether realm, your loud chanting tore your vocal cords. No! You had the look of an Adonis, but soon realized you had the brain of one, too. No! This is the worst. This is the worst. I should have known better, you think, as you throw the paw into the river. As the paw disappears in the distance, you jump at a loud noise and lose two sanity. Ass! So, we're pretty busted up right now. What cards do we have here? The Vigilant, the Cockerel. Which one allows me to do magic, though? I mean, we have a lot of money, and I don't really have a clue as to what I should pick. So, let's go downtown, I guess. Downtown, everything's waiting for you. Plan a heist or perform the reaping? Let's plan a heist. You orchestrate heists on museums and private collections. You get ample opportunity to practice your sleight of hand and reward it with occult artifacts and treasures. Defense. There you go. Sounds good. The bootlegger cracks open the crate and you stare at the neatly lined bottles of whiskey. These will fetch a price. Madam Fufu's alone will buy at least 15 crates. You hear a sharp whistling sound and the smuggler collapses clutching a knife buried in his throat. All around you, shady f shadow figures step out of cover. There's stupid green hats causing you to grimace in recognitions. Northsiders. Damn Irish bastards, your group was surrounded. Summon an Erloth! The smell of ozone fills the dark courtyard. With a crack of thunder, a tear opens in the fabric of reality, and a tentacled Erloth slithers out. You watch in horror as the sanity-shattering monstrosity suffers mutilations upon the Irish gang. 
Yeah, take that, you bastards. One of your acolytes runs away screaming in terror as the Erloth feasts on the bodies of the patties. The slurping and crunching sounds make your stomach turn and you nearly heave once or twice. Having eaten its fill, the Erloth turns on you, raising to its full height. Awfully sorry for the mess, it says in impeccable English. I do so rarely get out. I know how I could thank you, it says with what you could only assume was a smile. I'll show you how to summon my brother Bob. He's a bit of an uncultivated brute, but great in a fight. Oh, we got two knowledge. Nice. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Give me that knowledge, though. Give me that knowledge. Afterwards, the Erloth you learn as Maximilian Beauregard Finch III helps you load the crates onto your truck. Four more riches. We rich, y'all. We getting money. All right, so we got one more go. On the cards, it seems like the Maltese Cockerel is probably the one that we want, but I probably need influence for that, right? So let's go get some influence. Putting on your best fake smile, you dive on in. You start a conversation with, hey, would you like to join our cult of ancient tentacled alien worshipping madmen? And you get really, really rude answers. True, it used to be the cult's main marketing pitch during the 17th century, but that led to the Salem witch trials and widespread layoffs in the marketing department. No, these days we start small. We start with, hey, did you know that you could have eternal life with a nearly unlimited supply of Hershey bars if you only let us hook you up to this machine and cleanse your aura? Then after a couple of sessions, you explain to them that the world was once ruled by tentacled aliens, and by paying you a couple thousand dollars, you can nearly guarantee that they will never show up again. Then, after they were bankrupt, you just explained to them that the starving slavery monstrosities from another dimension could actually be quite satisfying. And so you progress them through the cycles till either they earn their keep or end up on the chopping block. It's pretty simple, actually. Only catch was that you desperately needed a new gimmick to convince people to join the first circle. Um, develop a new process? You had up all night trying to come up with a plan. At about four in the morning and several cups of coffee and no substantial idea, you settled on a new clothespin cleansing technique. Bleary eyes, you tested it on yourself. The basic premise is that you would see how many clothespins you could attach to your ears, lips, and various skin folds. If you managed to not pass out from the pain, you would be worthy of the eternal life. After passing out several times, you decided the technique probably would not be received very well. But at least your pain threshold went up. Yay. The time is here. Let's do the Maltese cockerel. I have lots of money. Yeah, confirm it. So we have the minor stat. We need money. But the major stat is probably influence. I select it. The reckoning is nigh. You attract the Maltese cockerel to an auction in Morocco where you tried to forcibly recommend to a potential buyer that this item wasn't worth his time. Fortunately, it turns out he's a czar and his bodyguards were of the opinion that you should mind your own damn business. After taking a bit of a beating from your very persuasive bodyguards, you could see their point. Back home, you were thankful to realize that the others had no idea what the Maltese cockerel was. Now standing at your appointed spot in the ritual, having donned your golden costume, you prepare to perform the chicken dance. A major fail. Bummer. The ritual quiets down and all eyes turn. Nothing good happened. Yep, we are defeated again. This game is called Fahagen. So, you know, aw. Uh, unfortunately, some of the other cultists intent on finding out what had gone wrong went back to the prophecy. You still remember how they all suddenly looked up from the book and straight at you, realizing that the Maltese cockerel actually looked like. What happened next was described as frontier justice. You were manhandled into a keg of tar and beaten with feather pillows. As soon as you found a gap, you ran your tar and feathered ass away from there as quickly as you could. Ah, well. Tarred and feathered, my friends. Tarded and feathered. I will see you all later. Thanks for dropping on in. This was Fahagan. If you want to get the game for yourself, you can look down below and get the link there. If you like this video, hit the like button. I might make, I might do more episodes. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you next time. I do.